Yes, Surrey Nation. We are excited to get this season off with a bang. I think they're all taking tires. And on top of that, it's going to be even saucier. It's going to be an all-out shootout to the end. He's got a lot of sight on these guys. I can imagine you've got a bravery. He's getting this close to the diffuser. All you gotta do is win the race. You don't have to lead a whole bunch of laps. Oh, they're gonna be side by side going into the next corner. Oh, that's a big contact in the back of the field. Can't stay out there like this. He stayed in it. So we are off and away for SRA. Hello everybody, welcome to Season 10, Race 1 of SRA Division 2. Uh, I am your host tonight, I, this is Waleed. I'm here with Dan and Sam, say hello boys. Hello boys. Hello. First race of the season is always fun, new commentating teams, new staff roles, everyone kind of getting shuffled around, a bunch of people in new divisions. Uh, yeah, I think we're ready to hop in. We're having some issues on the server side. Thank you, Kunos. So a bunch of the drivers are having to get in manually and we'll see how it goes. So we're going to jump right in with the track map. Talk about where we're racing today. Yeah, so, you know, welcome to Kailami down here in South Africa. It's probably one of the most underrated tracks, uh, mostly just because a lot of races don't happen down here. There's not a lot of leagues in the world that will travel that far and bring all their cars out. So you may only know this from ACC, but I promise it is amazing. Um, one of the things everyone talks about with this track is that it has good flow. So when you know that a track has good flow, that basically means you need to carry your momentum as much as possible. You really don't want to have any sort of you know, break all the way down to a low speed and then just try to accelerate out of it. That doesn't happen too much on a lot. So when you start coming out of turn 16, the last turn, and you're heading onto the main straight, technically turn one is uh, just a kink. You can pretty much just call the whole thing a straight. However, if you do aim yourself, uh, aim the card just right, and you kind of cut the kink a bit, you will save a few feet, and that does save, oh, let's just go with hundredths of a second. Um, Coming into turn two, it's a heavy braking zone, obviously coming down from the end of the straight. And because you want to maintain that flow, trail braking is just everything here. So as you're able to trail brake around turn two, and you really need to time when you get back onto the throttle because you're going to wash out and track out between two and three where you have a ton of extra space to track out, but it's extremely dirty. And so a lot of times cars will go out there and lose their traction. and they'll spin because you're coming with such momentum through there. Uh, getting through three and four is usually not too difficult. Um, once you have the power down and the traction out of two, it's just a little bit of a uh, chicane, and you want to pull yourself out to the right wide side of four, hit the brakes, and try to carry that momentum. And you can pretty much run over most of the inside curb of turn five. Um, I think uh, turn five being called barbecue, uh, you can pretty much take that curb, run all the way out, and then I think you can get even your left uh, inside tire over into the red and white curbing um, there too, and be pretty much pretty safe about it. You also don't lose much time, so uh, you don't need to worry too much about trying to correct yourself. Just get on the gas, you're on another one of the straights, you need to charge up the hill towards sunset. Uh, sunset is very, very quick. Usually it's just a light breath onto the brakes and then you wanna maybe downshift to get the weight over the front of the wheels and you hold the turn sort of a single radius and as soon as you can, you wanna get back on the throttle. Uh, a little bit too early and you can wash out. You have some space, it's not the worst thing in the world, but you definitely want to get on throttle as soon as possible. This is where a lot of people will catch you up. And the next part of the track in sector two and three is the most difficult to uh, to keep someone behind you. So coming into turn seven, um, right out of sunset into clubhouse, 
it's another sort of hard break and then trail break over. However, this is a uh, decreasing radius turn, so you're going to have a late apex, which means you really don't want to get, get on the gas too, too early. That'll wipe you out to the right side. But as soon as you can get on the gas, seven to eight is another sort of straight. So you need to really get on the power uh, and, and get up there as fast as possible because you can sort of carry momentum into the S's starting at turn eight. Uh, you can cut across the entire inside curve of turn eight pretty easily, depending on how your defense is set up. At least last night in the Porsche, I was able to do it. Um, and then when you finish off turn eight, the whole point of turn eight is just to set yourself up for turn nine, heading up to the Ryukyu top of the, uh, the hill there. So you can kind of forget about eight, trying to hit the apex perfectly. As soon as you can get your wheel turned and get your traction and throttle down so that as you track out of nine, you're not going off track, that is all you need to do. You need to get your power on into nine as soon as possible to get yourself up the top of the hill. Now, the top of the hill is uh, super fun because it's basically blind uh, until your breaking point. And once you hit your breaking point, if you're a little bit late, you might go deep into the runoff, which has a whole bunch of dirty, uh, you know, track debris, which is always a problem for then coming down into a, night, a nice heavy turn. Uh, and if you take it too shallow, then you're gonna find yourself really trying to hold the wheel getting around that turn because it is an increasing radius turn. So as you try to apply throttle, someone who got it right behind you can actually overtake you pretty easily heading down into turn 11 and then down the mine shaft. Mine shaft being 11, 12 into 13. Uh, the mine shaft is a nice, long, sweeping, almost straight. There is, uh, if you sort of set your stuff up right, you can set your left turn into 12, uh, just a single radius and hold it, and then you should be set. You want to hug the left side of 12 down to 13 into the crocodiles and break around the 100 meter board or so. And this is very important to stay left, break, and then sweep and try to hit as close to the inside uh, apex of 13 as you can, because you can get on the gas and sort of crack out between 13 and 14. There's a whole lot of space there. Um, so it gives you a lot of crack out space to get on the gas and really try to make up your time maybe that you might have uh, missed when you're, you're breaking at the end of mine shaft because it's a bit scary, especially if you're too wide. And then of course we come to everybody's favorite turn, the turn that you should all know the name of and know the lore of, uh, turn 15, aka Hida, which has a nice big curb on the inside where if you hit it, you will likely jump a foot in the air and six feet to the left. If you're too wide, you will jump six feet into that car and they will jump a hundred feet to the left and then everyone just has a great time. Very fun. Um, in folly mode, you know, you don't have much gas in your car. You can pretty much just lift and get yourself through Fita. Uh, but when you have race pace, usually you want to breathe on the brakes just a little bit. Um, that's sort of what makes it so tough is it's a fast turn. But if you just keep it really narrow along that, uh, that curb, it should be okay. And then the final turn is just the whole point basically is to get on the throttle as soon as possible, get back down the main straight. So however you do that into the final turn, if you break early and then start your turn in a little bit early, you can get on the throttle and track out. Or if you break late and then you can hold momentum and go around, that works too. And uh, that is a very long described lap of Kylon. So, uh, races are just now getting on track to start their hot laps. Before we can move forward and you know show the fun stuff, we gotta get this bread. So naturally, that's right. We have a few very very gracious sponsors. So thank you to all the sponsors you see on screen, as well as the title sponsors for supporting us here at SRA, as well as our main sponsors of Documize, a modern business solution for product management. Feel free to go to Documize.com to learn more about what they do. And then support from Retro Saga, a North American-based gaming company that provides accessories for your favorite classic systems, including Nintendo, Sega, PlayStation all the fun stuff uh they're a canadian based company find them at retrosaga.ca uh beyond that the place that can save you some money uh we have affiliate links track racer one of the biggest names in rigs here uh experience redefined gaming with track racers high quality sim rigs and accessories 
use code SR8 at checkout to support us. That is capital S-R-A, lowercase t-e. Uh, following that, Armamentario, a toolbox for ACC that will enhance your chance to win. Gives you a bunch of information. If I had Armamentario last night, maybe I would have finished a position sooner because I would have realized someone was undercutting me. Uh, fully customizable, enhanced HUD, change the way you experience the game. And finally, our resident setup source, Go Setups. Premium esports setups for everybody. We have an affiliate link within our Discord. Take your driving to the next level. Uh, I'm a big fan of Go Setups personally. You get with your setups a Motec, a esports setup, and a safe setup. Uh, moving forward, we're gonna kind of jump through these things to get on track as soon as we can. Uh, these are your D2 drivers. Some familiar faces, some new names. No points yet. Welcome to race one. Uh, and then here are your team standings. Again, no points, but take a look for your favorite name. See who's who. Let's find out what the drama's going to be. Personally, I think, uh, where is it? Where is this team name? The Basin Alish, number seven. Bailey Kish and Jason Allen. I'm sure they're going to be fun to, fun to watch this season. Bailey Kish currently in D2 has the best hot lap time from the week of practice. Now jumping to our race setting times not them and as I say that Bailey Kish is currently in provisional pole uh, his last lap time was a 41 285 and we are good to go all right boys talk to me who do we think is gonna have a good chance of winning this race who do we think has the best chance of binning it what do we think the fun's gonna be what's going on Oh, you know it's always in the middle. That's where the fun is to uh, start. You get out and uh, qualify nice, and you get around the first couple of turns safe, then you just got to sort of deal with the guys around you and try to set some good laps. And if you're in the back, you've got to go very slow and very wide around turn two. And in the middle, it's just sort of survival, uh, mostly based on luck, I think. Uh, again, Bailey currently P1, and he is currently two and a half tenths up, a quarter second up coming through Cheetah. Kept it clean, found some more time, three tenths up into the last corner, about to run into some traffic, but looks like he'll do just enough to stay ahead. And he's going to cross the line about four tenths up on his own time for a 40.8, half a second clear of P2, who is currently not gaining time on their lap. Jump them, K in the Porsche. Down the hill. Yeah, it looks like uh, between Bailey Kish, the you know leader in the uh, qualifying hot lap, and uh, whoever was the furthest back in this division was about two seconds. So it's from a 140.5 to about a 142.5 thereabout. Um, so that's not a huge gap, but uh, it would be cars. noticeable on track. 40 cars, two seconds is not that that big of a gap. Uh, Co in the chat saying he bets that Jason takes out Bailey at some point in the race. To which uh, I would respond, that would be scenes, and I actually can't wait for that to happen. And we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Who's who's on a heater right now? Uh, Pauly is six tenths up on his previous time, early in the lap going into the S's. So I don't know if he just had a really really poor banker lap. Or he has suddenly handed the control over to someone faster than him. But we'll see, we'll see what happens. And unfortunately, as I say that, he invalidates. Commentator's curse. You know, it is what it is. Uh, he'll have time for one more lap. For those of you who are unfamiliar, the Silvers have between the 20 minute mark and the 10 minute mark uh, to set their qualifying time. Uh, if they start a valid lap before that 10 minute mark pings off, they may continue that lap. So, Pauly currently in last in the silvers, having only put in a banker of a 42.5, uh, will need to pick it up, and this will be his last lap and his last chance to get a good time. Uh, someone redeemed in the chat, think about tomorrow. I already have a water, I will drink it. Thank you. For the record, do not bottoms us up, bottoms up us, I will not be drinking. At least yesterday, I found that as I lost fuel, it definitely increased my speed in the Porsche. So maybe uh, Hartman has some chance still uh, to move himself up the ranks. True. 
and although I don't think the Ferrari has the same setup as the Porsche where the fuel is in the front, which definitely yeah. contributes, I think, to some of the perceived sketchiness that comes around driving the Porsche. Yeah, it's certainly something you have to adjust your brake bias for, sort of shift the weight more forward as you lose the actual weight, um, and that tends to help. Where was this information for me yesterday when I was racing? See, I needed you in my ear yesterday. This is not helpful to me at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I drive a Porsche, so um, I know what happens when the weight leaves the nose. <laughs> I could have used that track overview as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, yeah, so we're meeting on uh, Monday nights for practice so we can talk about things before we actually race. I, I can talk about this stuff. I can't really do it. <laughs> Everyone's fast in theory. In practice, is a little different. Uh, speaking of fast, Paul is up 9 tenths as the camera is stuck on him through this qualifying lap. Uh, no. Looking in chat, show feet, please. No, I don't have a camera. <laughs> I will not be doing that. Oh, uh, a little, little lag twitch from Paula there, but he managed to clean up his lag and cross the line five tenths faster, and it's enough to move up three positions. Uh, golds are now exiting. Silver qualifying is done. We have a couple people still on laps as Schlitz crosses the line two tenths up and takes P2. Uh, Bailey Kish holding your provisional pole with a 42.615. Uh, we're following Mr. Jason Allen in the Aston. A little split and half Aston livery, big fan. Uh, as a reminder in SRA, we do not allow overtaking during the quali outlap or at any point in qualifying unless you are very clearly given a pass by by the car in front. So we had some issues with that yesterday. Hopefully we don't have any today. Uh, you'll notice as they come through Cheetah, all these cars will slow right on down to build themselves a gap. Uh, Dunham has a pretty significant gap to who is that behind them. Could not read the name tag that quickly. Uh, but we will follow Jason for this first lap. See if he can beat his teammates' time. Again, the provisional pull time being a 42.615. Oh, funny enough, uh, for that time, he did an identical split for Sector 1 and Sector 2. 30.977 in Sector 1, 30.977 in Sector 2. What did you yeah. say original poll was? Uh, 42... Oh, sorry, no, that's his last time. Uh, 40.897. There that's you much go. more accurate. Yeah, it's nice to see the top, the, you know, top 15 within one second of the silver. It's been a Where long off season in this. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the nice things that you get with the uh, higher divisions here, uh, that's unfortunate, uh, but when you have the higher divisions and people are, you know, not only just that close in time, but also are probably more experienced and, and a little bit more, um, I guess, reliable, I would say, when you set your time differences in qualifying, like two or three seconds back from the guy in front of you, you can be reasonably certain that you'll keep that time difference and you'll actually be able to run your lap. Uh, whereas in sort of the upper levels, and you have some people that are a little bit less uh, experienced or, you know, uh, first race or whatnot, you do end up sort of catching up to some people or feeling the, uh, the breath on your neck, as it will, from someone who maybe should be a division up or two at this point. Yeah, it's always rough when you build a three-second gap and then it gets run down during qualifying and you're just standing there looking around like, what's, what's going on here? Exactly. Yeah, but... I'm the, I always try to go out first and leave as much space as possible and slow down. If I don't make it out first, I always get scared that I'm going to run into the car behind in front of me. Uh, Gold's getting their bankers in. Uh, no one knocking on the top ten, but again, to be expected, their first real lap out on track. Uh, the track is still fast, so maybe towards the end of this qualifying session they get some rubber down. Uh, track evolves, it gets a little bit quicker, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, so far just watching cars do laps, trying to figure out who's where. Uh, do you guys think that Bailey will hold pole position with that 40.8? I think he's got a good chance, but maybe top five. 
patches based in the chat on, saying absolutely not. Uh, <laughs> based on last night, though, the golds had a harder time in qualifying than the silvers did. So it'll be interesting True. to see if uh, they can pick it up. All right, D2, you're fighting for the for the name of golds everywhere. <laughs> Go silvers. Are we all silvers yeah. in D4, by the way? D5 silver. Oh, there you go. Silver <laughs> gang. Represent. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that's the so problem, right? Is you can do a great hot lap and be faster than lots of people, but if your stint's a little bit slow, if your, you know, racing is a little bit, uh, you, know, you know, less experienced with traffic, then qualifying up high is probably less help than you'd think. You know, right in the beginning, if people start swamping you, it's pretty dangerous. Yeah, I think being at the front is ideal if you are a, um, and I mean this term with a little bit of disrespect, a hot lapper. <laughs> um, if you have some racecraft, sometimes being a little bit behind that and kind of being in the mix, but high enough up that you should avoid the real craziness is real nice. Uh, in chat, MCD saying, I'm new to ACC. What dashboards are you utilizing to see all drivers' lap times and sector times? We use ACC race control. Uh, but if you want to use something that is viable and helpful in game, please refer to our sponsor. Check out Armamentario. They uh, provide you with all your dashboards and heads up display needs. Gotta get that bread. Yeah, I, I was testing it last year, even in VR. Uh, I was able to set up a nice uh, group of dashboards that would help me out. I wish I could get ACC to work in VR for me. I have a headset, but uh, one, I get incredibly motion sick. And two, I, for some reason, when I launch the game in my headset, I'm stuck upside down in a garage, like I've been kidnapped by the Mafia. It's very strange. Yeah, it's like I'm in the trunk like, of someone's car. A good time. Somebody just disappeared off the track there, probably taking a little bit too much uh, out of the corner. You know, sometimes you're really stretched to the limits trying to get the best hot lap you can, and, well, back to the pits you go. Back to the pits indeed, and with three and a half minutes left, you only have time for... You can probably get your outlap and get one quality lap in, and that, that's going to be it. I actually, I do find it common for me to do a uh, hot lap super pole type thing, where I'll go out with an outlap, and then I'll do one fast lap, and I'll go back in and adjust some things. And uh, I constantly set my times with just one hot lap. Um, I think because I was usually running with a lot faster people, so it's harder to find a good gap. Um, but That's now fair. it works for me. Uh, as uh, Sakom comes around the corner, four tenths up from his P8 time, and he is only four and a half tenths behind pole. Can he put it on pole? And he does by seven thousandths of a second. Cool. That looks like a good last turn. He got the power on right at the right time. I've heard very good things about the DM BMW this season from a lot of different drivers who have different driving styles. Uh, I anticipate us seeing BMWs do very, very well all season. And Bailey, you suck. Come on now. No pull? What was the point of all that practice time? Top of the leaderboard during the practice week. Couldn't put it together in uh, actual qualifying. Sad. <laughs> uh, well, the temperatures are a little bit different in, uh, in qualifying here, I believe, right, than the... Uh the actual um, series qualifying? Uh, they uh, should be the same. We've had some server issues this week that thankfully our admin team were very good at their jobs, even though they're all volunteer jobs, uh, have managed to sort out. So there's no telling under what conditions that time was set. But we are here 21-21, which should match the practice servers that have been going on. So what's and interesting is yesterday uh, in the D4 qualifying, at least, a number of people set personal best uh, hot lap in qualifying, um, at least a number that was noticeable to me. And so if you if you look at um, Jared Seckham, who's you know professional pole right now, that time is like three tenths faster than his, uh, his time on the leaderboard. Listen, some people some people show up for practice, some people show up for game day. As yeah, Martin puts it in P3, rounds out the provisional podium starting positions. I feel like I usually gain at least two tenths on this, unless I totally bin it into a wall. That's a big unless. <laughs> we jump over to Stefiuk, who's three tenths up on his time and only five tenths off pole. So we'll see. Uh, I don't think he's long for P16. 
but the grid is the grid is tight. I think right now from top to bottom is 1.1 seconds, and for 40 mm. cars to be shoved into a basically one second gap is why I'm concerned going into T1. There was also just a quick yellow flag up at Clubhouse with maybe three cars going past as that happened. Hopefully it didn't uh, slow down their lap. Oh, Stefik takes P3 from Martin. Uh, and Sakom is improving on their lap. They're currently up a little bit, half a tenth, very modest, but, you know, the rich get richer. I'll switch to Sakom on the bot again. I have Crotcher coming down the hill, uh, up two tenths. And two tenths doesn't sound like a lot, but again, the whole grid of 40 cars is within a second. Two tenths will move you. I imagine from here, Krawczyk is 19th. He'll probably move into the top 10 pretty solidly. Let's see. Oh, he gained a bunch of time to the last corner. He's up five and a half tenths. From P19 to P5. Crossing the line as his qualifying ends. Provisionally, your top three is Sakom, Kish, Stefik. Let's see if anyone has a... Damiani might have an answer. About a quarter second up, crossing the line from P14, ends up in P6. Does a lot to improve eight spots. Is great improvement crossing the line, but not enough to knock off the top five. Well, there were four Astons in the top five of the uh, qualification hot lap for this division. So, definitely a fast car here. Yeah, the Aston's notoriously fast, notoriously easy to drive, but these are the cars that have the hearts of the people. GTRs of the world. <laughs> Wagner crosses the line from P15 and finishes in P6 and bumps Damiani down. Take that for your Aston. And he was the There's last driver. Uh, definitely see the intermingling of gold and silver there. Yeah, uh, Bailey surrounded by not-so-friendly faces. It always is a bit sad, though, when you have the qualifying splits like this and you go out and you're, you know, e, I don't know, four or five or something in silver, and then you spend the rest of the time just watching your number drop as everyone else sets their lap. <laughs> uh, Patch is saying, over-under on lap one incidents will be set at three. Bet the line. Wages are half loaves of bread. Well, Mr. Patches, if you were at all familiar with gambling, you'd understand the over-under should be a half. Over three and a half to be four, or under three and a half to be three. Uh, I think a bunch of people taking the under. I think I'm going to take the over. Uh, watched the race yesterday in D4. Was part of the race yesterday. And uh, <laughs> we didn't have any huge pileups, but multiple contacts, a bunch of bumps. And, I mean, the D2 drivers are faster. That doesn't necessarily make them better at racing. In fact, every season, there's one division that just can't get their act together. And it has been Division 2 before. We'll see who it's going to be uh, this season. Uh, Dank, we have you just hit drive real quick, change your camera, and we'll be good to go for the race. Yeah. Well, so there's this phenomenon that um, a lot of my track instructors have talked about where you get sort of better and better and better at what you're doing. And then at some point, you're able to do sort of all of the moves and motions that you're supposed to do, but you're able to do them at a level that you think is right, and you're actually overdriving at that point. And mm -hmm. so you actually have to pull yourself back a little bit, back to the, you know, sort of peak. So I would imagine D2 is sort of what you're expecting for the guys who are getting real close to those D1 alien sort of times. They know what they're doing is correct, but they might be just a little bit more, you know, anxious to go and take this gap or, uh, you know, stay on someone's tail a bit too long without the, you know, direct experience of all of that time right behind someone faster. What a, what a, like, attractive grid we have for Division 2. Like, all the liveries look great. All of you black cars didn't get your liveries into ASR. Shame. Uh, but, yeah, overall, the grid looking good. I really want to see where... Mr. Gordon Beverly ends up. Shout out Three Sticks. Uh, he was with me in Florida. We went to Daytona. Watched me fall in love with the waitress. Uh, it was a good time. <laughs> nice. As uh, the cars are now off for their parade lap. Or they should be. It looks like Sakom is on his own. Hello? 
but we hear the cars coming. There we go. They're catching up. Yeah, I'm picking up Queso in the picture-in-picture -picture, uh, position 10 going into the race so that we can see what happens in front of him into, into the first turn. Yes, Dom. Shout out Adriana. Has my heart forever. Uh, chat also saying Paula in P37 Champion Motorsports is washed. And uh, <laughs> I can't say I disagree. It'll be interesting to see where uh, the Cars movie uh, character ends up. <laughs> the uh, the livery back there it's always you know it would be nice to see him cut through everything at the end and blast past the finish line but uh sometimes you just sort of have the livery that is what your hopes are and not so much your skill level i hope it's uh late lightning mcqueen and not lightning mcqueen in the first act of the first movie where his pit crew yells at him you need tires you idiot and then he blows the tire in the last lap that would be rough the car's lore is deep uh, shout out the unofficial SRA movie night. <laughs> That's oh, the I thing with liveries night. and your own car. You never really get to see the outside. You see just a touch of your bonnet, maybe some uh, mirrors, maybe your wing if you're looking through the back. But that's it. And this season, the the theme of the season being fantasy, as uh, Mr. Sakoma looks like completely ignored. Um, Looks like just like a blue digital print with some some branding. Uh, if we look at Bailey's car, it is a split between a Star Wars and a Warhammer theme down the middle. Uh, I believe Bailey brought the Star Wars and Jason brought the Warhammer. Sounds like we have a little bit of crackling in the audio. I wonder where that's coming from. Yeah, Chad, is it a specific person or the whole time? Whole thing, hmm. We'll, uh, we are checking, we are checking. I don't know what would be causing static on the audio side. Someone has a lot of radiation. We're, we're just getting roasted in the chat, boys. It's going to be a rough, uh, you know, first race of the season, technical issues. We're working through them. Well, you guys sound clear to me, so I'm fine. Yeah, and we're the ones that matter, honestly. Forget chat, they're not important. As we it's like are mystery science. green light. I lied. Now we're green. <laughs> Tragic. Absolutely tragic. Uh, let's see how this goes in the T1. Follow P1 through 6, 7. Bailey has to look up the inside. Start of the lap. I like it. Starting aggressive. It's going to disadvantage him for turn 3, though. Or I guess turn 4. But it doesn't matter. He gets he gets it up the inside, and he takes P1. Man it's wants pretty to clean bread. in the mid-group, also which is very nice to see, only going about two, and Ooh. as I say that, someone gets bumped. Seem to hold on to it, though. Look like it. Oh, we have some chaos in the sunset. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's all popping That's off. Just some style points, big drift. I think he got it. He got it. Oh, he didn't have it. Schlitz having a, a big old incident. Let's go back and see what happened here. Uh, something happened. Oh, there's that a Ferrari in the back end of the wall, but they managed to save it. And then as they come through sunset, a little bit of contact catches the car. An incredible save. Incredible avoidance by the Aston behind him, too. Oh, all right. The replay showed me the wrong incident. Uh, as you can see in the picture in picture, he ended up backwards. Sir, you cannot park there. Bailey building a gap out immediately is not something I expected. I did think that he had the best shot of winning the race because I went strictly by the numbers. He had the fastest uh, hot lap time for the practice session for the week. 
but the pick that he's pulled almost a second in a lap off the jump. Uh, hopefully he holds it together, and if he does, we won't be seeing much of him on screen. We'd rather find the, the fights right here. Acid Merc. Uh, fun fact, I'm pretty sure this Acid uses the 4-liter AMG engine, and the Merc still uses the old 6.3-liter AMG engine. Oh, weird. The uh, streetcars use the same engine. That's an interesting fact, though. Ooh, gets a little bit squirrely there. And he's on the yeah, outside. He's the the yeah, uh, he's gonna back off. Yeah, probably smart. You're not gonna win. It. You're not gonna win the race in these first two laps, but you can definitely lose it. Well, you can also come back underneath like he's trying. That Mercedes is unusually wide for a GT. Like, it feels wider than you expect. Uh, so, very easy to defend, but this Jason decides to sneak a look up the outside. And gets the move to stick. Coming into uh, this blue coop here, going down the mine path. Yeah, just gets it up the inside of the hairpin, and we'll, we'll see if he runs away, but got the move into the hairpin. Successfully defensive position. Now the guy behind under attack. He should take this opportunity to get some space. Yeah, it sure looks like that Aston is uh, falling back a little bit, car after car. Not yeah. going to want to uh, deal with that for too long. How do you guys feel about that? Do you do you have the inclination where when you lose a position or two that you didn't expect, you're a little rattled, and then all of a sudden you find yourself drowning a little bit? Like, why are the, all these cars passing you? Or is that just me? Um. There's not many times where I lose a position that I didn't expect to lose. Hmm. Got it. We try to be more, uh, more uh, allowing people through, uh, giving them a hard fight, but not trying to fight something I know I'm going to lose to maintain my rhythm. That's fair. But I think that that consistency, I think, is more important than trying to like rattle yourself if possible. That being said, I'll get angry at myself. As well as <laughs> The frustration is palpable at any given time. It's not, you see, you guys race for the results. Like, that is a results-based approach. I'm in it for the racing. Let, let's find chaos, which is why uh, <laughs> SRA is the most notorious dude. Oh, what I mean is I always get rattled by people behind me, so I expect when they get close, I'm going to lose that place. I'm just better at chasing. Got it. They're coming into the hairpin now that Porsche has the inside line, which is very advantageous coming out. But keeps yeah, it a the little break narrow really. than they need to. Porsche being a little too polite, I think. Well, the Porsche is also silver. Um, there might be an experience difference there. He might go too wide with this. <laughs> Uh, was that an Audi or something? Did they go too wide, Sergina. Okay, now the Porsche is just able to drift behind this. Good. That is Honda, Ryan Chan. We're just kind of following the wing cams. Big old table plate for a wing. What are your guys' opinions on swan neck wings on road cars? Uh, if it's like a GT3 RS, perfect. If it's pretty much anything else. Front wheel uh -huh. drive Honda Civic? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. If it's not basically a track car that happens to be street legal, then it's not worth it. It's fair, but my counterpoint, big win. <laughs> so you, you didn't think about that part. I go, with, I go with function over for I can't get my Honda Civic up to 150 miles an hour. I don't think we're going to can't if it's a Type R. Can't confirm. <laughs> well, that just scares me. The tailwind. Listen, tailwind, downhill, the circumstances of the speed are not important. <laughs> we got three Porsches right here. This is kind of fun to see. I mean, you know, because a lot of times in GTG racing, one of the best aspects of it is that all of the different cars are not so close to the same spec. Their balance of power really tries to match them, but otherwise you still have to drive different lines, braking, uh, you have different power down the straight. But when you watch three of sort of the same car in a row, it can be very telling on who has 
you know, a little bit more skill, a little more experience, because suddenly everything else is equal. Equal in theory. I mean, we do have a GTR on the track. Which apparently, with the bop, is not that bad. As we see Diggs come in for an early pick, going for the undercut. Uh, I got undercut yesterday, so I can tell you this is a powerful strategy. He does it correctly and manages to keep his nose clean for the rest of the race. But uh, we'll see how, how viable that is. Yeah, definitely heard in chat some people uh, made the undercut work yesterday, which it's interesting because, uh, you know, I was sort of talking about what the strategy might be and everyone seemed to think, to, you know, send it, but hey, if it works, it works. I pit in the last three minutes of the race. The undercut finally pulled through for Mr. Nate Andrew and he ended up taking P1 and silver and I took P2. Uh, again, if I had armamentario, I might have known I was being undercut. <laughs> My salty would have been. Uh, Queso takes a little bit off track and Jason Allen says, yes please, sends up the inside of the S's, where the outside is a very disadvantageous line. You do not want to be on the outside of the engine of the S's. I would recommend actually backing out of it. Certainly looks like he did too. Interesting that the fastest lap here is somebody in the uh, the mid-pack. I mean, potentially it's you know, somewhat based on getting a streamlined down a straight, but I mean, with Bailey running away up front, you'd think he would have the nice open air and a fastest lap. As you see him kind of fly away under your screen, uh, Bailey's 2.1 seconds up on P2. But Stefia gets half a second behind P3, and Wagner in the uh, GTR is three times behind him. So, let's see what goes on here. It was interesting in D5 yesterday, it seemed like the front runner seemed to slow down after the first, you know, five or six laps. And from P5, P6, I was able to catch up. So I wonder, I don't know if it's a tire issue or people just getting, you know, complacent in the race. They're not pushing as hard, but it seemed to catch up a bunch of places or a bunch of time. Yeah, I can definitely say the latter happened to me where I had like five seconds gap in both directions. So, you know, kind of came off a little bit, bring the car home. Uh, took it real cautious through Cheetah for the second half of the race. And, you know, maybe that caution is what bit me in, bit me in the butt later in the race when I got undercut. But it definitely is a natural, I think, response to having some space. Everything kind of calms down. People start to realize, okay, I haven't won the race yet. And I haven't lost it yet. Let's settle into a good rhythm. Well, it's also like we talked about earlier. You know, some people will qualify high and they're sort of hot lappers. And hot lappers might be able to do a five lap stint really well, but then, you know, a 30 minute, an hour long race can be a little bit tough for some people who are not used to that if they don't do that sort of uh, training often or those sort of endurance races. Um, so yeah, they can really start losing their pace if all of their testing, all of their practice has been doing only five laps at a time. They don't really know what their setup can do after that. Gets a little bit squirrely tires wise or, you know, as the fuel goes down, they didn't plan with that enough. You never really know. Interesting. Chat's still saying a lot of static coming through. I'm going to do a quick little experiment, chat. So I'm going to mute the game for five seconds. And we'll see if that eliminates it. Then I'm going to the commentate in five seconds. See if that can through. So this is now me muting the game. Five, four, three, two, one. Game sound back on. And then this is me muting the commentators. You will not hear us for a couple seconds. Uh, please let us know where the static is coming from and then we can see if we can address it. Oh, immediately. It's the game. Sick. Uh, we'll see what what can be done about that. Which makes sense because I can't hear the game at all. working on that as we go. Uh, well, why don't you just mute the game, and I'll go... <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll leave that up to the chat uh, if they want to hear just three grown men making vroom vroom sounds. Uh, and they donate a bunch of channel points, we'll see, we'll see what happens. <laughs> but closest gap on track right now is Charles and Dunham as they're coming around the hairpin, almost side by side, then decides to slot back in. Uh, Chat saying, let's go GRR. Uh, no. 
the only the only conglomerates that matter are Plan E and Common Grace. Heard it here first. Chat really wants to hear us go boom boom over the car sound. It's really unfortunate. As uh, Brandon Chen dives into the pits in the NSX. There's a lot of hatred for Bailey from one person going on in chat. Uh, real upset that he set the fastest lap. Uh, 41.5 is rapid under race conditions. He's pulled a four second gap to P2. Running away with it. As we got some yellow flags for Dudley, who's. Ooh, that's a bad place to be backwards. Uh, let's see what happened to the unfortunate Dudley Do Right. Also a commentator. Uh, had the pleasure of meeting him uh, over at Daytona and just. Uh, what happened here? Oh, him and Al, Mr. Latufo, got just caught up in a little bit of an incident. Ironic that it says do right. Yeah, unfortunately, he did left and uh, looks like might have turned in a little much and clipped the McLaren. But managed to eventually get it turned around. Looks like minimal damage, but to the car. Lots of damage to the ego and a lot of damage to the timesheets. Speaking of, I mean, timesheets, it looks like a lot of people in that, uh, on that back half of, or at least were, are now in the back half, have taken their pits already. Yeah. I wonder if um, they did some research watching the, watching the races or hearing about the races. Because uh, we have a real, real vocal community that everyone kind of participates in the Discord, talks about the race, goes back and forth. I wonder if some of these drivers are taking notes trying to figure out what strategy call they were going to make. Yeah, also, I mean, anyone we may or may not have kept an eye on that might have, you know, went off a little bit at the, uh, at the beginning and tore up their tires a little bit. Sometimes they played him cool down and pit with the move. Oh, this might be my favorite livery uh, in D2 right now. This, uh, this Year of the Dragon Porsche. No shock, it comes from Shark, Comic Racing. The, uh, I would say the graphic design hub of the entire league. They got, they got some people in there, they got some hitters. Between Shark and Selena themselves, they kind of, uh, they, they do things with digital pictures that I can't comprehend. That's why I download things from people like that. Factual statement. Uh, Jason Allen, by the way, is up six positions from the starting position. He's now currently in P7. Uh, Jacob Palmieri right behind him also up six positions. So it sounds like these two have kind of just uh, linked up with each other and are cutting through the field. Uh, Jason currently has the highest speed trap of the race at 245Ks. Uh, I did not expect the Aston to have the highest speed trap, but there are no Lexus in D2, which is unfortunate. And slightly boring. <laughs> More mm -hmm. The consistency may win in the race at the end. I think it's interesting that my partner Stephanie was like, consistency is king. Often it is, as long as you're consistently almost fast versus being consistently slow. But, you know, it's possible Alan could make this work. As long as uh, the undercut isn't as strong as it was yesterday. Well, also with the slight staggering, I wonder if this comes to this comes uh, comes to issue later. Uh, will we see some team orders? Will Jason be a little bit of a rolling rolling wall? Uh, let's let's go see if they're in a team chat together. As I pull up our uh, pull up our Discord. Do I see them talking to each other. I do not. Hmm. I guess they're going going at it blind, no comms. Bailey uh, just hot lapping up at the front. Yeah, it's now almost five seconds clear to come. Uh, we'll, pull, we'll bring him up on stream now just to show you how boring his race looks. There are no other cars. There's no one in view. Yeah, yeah. this is not just a uh, qualifying we're watching here. Yeah, he's, he's having a great time. I don't know if any of you are into swimming, but it looks like, what was her name? Ledecky? where she has like the top 30 times of all time in that the 800 meter swim, 800 meter freestyle. 
there just are no people in the camera. As we get Me. flashes to come in the background. I don't love Red Bull as a Formula One team, uh, but uh, it's no different than Max Verstappen in the last uh, few years as well. He gets out in front, you have to, uh, you gotta pray. It's no different to Lewis when he did it six years before that, which is no <laughs> different from Vettel when he did it four years before that. When it rains, it pours championships. Yeah. Coming too wide into clubhouse. It's okay. Little little switch move gets up the inside. Dunn goes a little wide and exit, but I think that Aston might have the legs to overcome the poor exit versus the Porsche, but the Porsche is on the inside line. And then at turn one, the inside line is very strong. It does seem like they uh, backed out. In fact, I think that might be the same Porsche earlier that uh, outbraked them to, or braked a little bit early and let someone else buy in the same sort of method where uh, somebody in the the line that should not have been better on the outside was able to just break later and take it all around. It's interesting, of, definitely, you guys, from racing uh, versus hot lapping is the race craft and protecting your lines. Uh, I think is an interesting part of this whole thing because you're not racing anymore against just the track. You're racing against the track plus all these impediments that are driving at the same rate of speed. So definitely an interesting change with this conflict. Not against the run, but I, unfortunately I think it would be disadvantaged going the hairpin and can't convert it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was watching um, an SRO, not an SRO, uh, maybe an SRO stream yesterday with uh, SRO's own Ryan Yee at the wheel. And it's very argy-bargy at the top level. It's really hard to pass people if they're not going to make a mistake. So they were definitely driving with the elbows out. And, uh, we haven't seen anything like that yet. Although we have seen a lot of cars very far up the rear end of the car in front of them. Yeah, it definitely. Well, I mean, he yeah. hates that turn. Was it turn 15, <laughs> that hairpin back there? He's, I think, braked a little uh, early on that one. Losing position. Losing time in the car behind him. Jump into the yeah. battle for P4. This green GTR is so obnoxiously just awesome. It's so green. One thing that's common with all racing uh, that you know, most people know, but it's always good to remind you is that battles like this slow you down. Your lap times will always be slower when you're defending, when you're attacking, when you're doing all this sort of stuff. So seeing someone out front by like five seconds or so may be less about them and more about the fact that everyone behind is in a tight fight for a couple laps or even are still in a tight fight and it ends up slowing down. You can have people catch up from, you know, slower parts of the pack so everything bunched together. So, you know, Bailey getting away is probably the best thing he could do to, you know, help his race, but it's not 100% certain that he's actually you know, that fast and would do the same if he was behind somewhere or if he was in a battle. Yeah, and uh, I mean, he has 39 minutes and 45 seconds to find a way to screw it up. So, you know, consistency <laughs> matters. Um, also, apparently finding out from Mr. Dan Crane himself that K uh, is actually was in D6 last season and is currently fighting for P11 in his first D2, their first D2 race. Uh, as the, ooh, the Merc goes into the wall bad. We're gonna we're gonna get a good replay on that. And see what happened there. Looks like just caught the curve at Cheetah. Which can't which camera's gonna give the best view of this? Uh, I think he was at Cheetah yet, was he? Uh... Oh. oh. Guess not. Well truly unfortunate, but we did manage to see him completely lose it. Uh, I think it was Nuchita, probably just caught a bit too much of the curb. I yeah. need to adjust my replay timings and have that not happen again. Uh, chat informing us that Jason Allen is running Damiani down. He is now only a second and a half behind. Uh, again, considering where he started and how he's moving, he's having a great time. Although his speed trap his best speed trap time has just been tied by Dunham. Uh, they both did 245 Ks down the hill. Uh, Who's also in an Aston? 
who was also in an Aston. I just like the Aston. Shout out to <laughs> uh, Gordon Beverly, Mr. Three Sticks himself, up 14 positions. Uh, currently in P14, yet to pit. Uh, so we'll see what that shakes out to in terms of natural position. But has seemed to just have had a consistent race doing his lap times in the uh, this little art house BMW. A little paint splatter effect. And that's inspired by the actual, the first M4 GT3 race car they, they uh, had out on track with, I think, the Samantha Tan driver. I'm not sure. I'm making stuff up. Uh, our team definitely does the art cars, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know if they were the first ones to be a customer team for BMW. Uh, for this generation of car. As oh, Byron yeah, and Steffi are still just kind of fighting up at the top. Uh, going back and forth, back and forth. Uh, Wagner yet to get past, but he's being as annoying as possible as he maybe sends it up the inside? Nope. That gave me a quick close little behind. breath in as he went around that, you know, I thought he was going to get a little bit too close there, but great driving from both of them. How close that uh, GTR is that McLaren. It really feels like the GTR closes up into Sector 1. McLaren walks away in Sector 2. And then the gap kind of gets closed back up, really showing the difference in these cars. Uh, speaking of the difference between cars, I'm just a quick run for the chat through the pop. Uh, the pop being our balance of performance. Uh, the McLaren 720S Evo has a 10 kilogram uh, so it weighs plus 10. The Aston weighs plus 10. The Audi weighs plus 5. The M4 was at plus 5 and is now at 0. Uh, the 296 is at minus 5 is now at 0. The Bentley was at minus 30 and we realized maybe it's a little too strong. It's now at minus 15. And then finally the Mercedes AMG Evo at minus 5. Changed from minus 5. Shout out to Mr. Diego for that pop change. It looks like car 221, uh, Dudley Do Right, was white, maybe with a yellow flag, um, with slow moving car around Pita at the last lap. Um, I think we saw him turned around a few laps ago at the same place. Doesn't seem to be having that good of a uh, time right with that turn. This is not having a good time with that Honda. Uh, notoriously angry car to drive. It wants to bite you. The reputation that a lot of people give the Porsche is actually earned fairly by the Honda. As we see a whole gaggle of cars coming out the last corner together. Oh, a little bit of contact. Ooh. If you're not rubbing, you're not racing, right? Yeah, this group is an interesting group for the, the back side of this race. Uh, really all within like one or two seconds of each other, depending on where you are in the lap. So if you want to watch some racing, I think this is it. We're uh, really going to see some change. Well, that's where we can, you know, a little bit of a plug here at SRA. We put 40 cars within a second or 1.1 seconds of each other uh, in qualifying. And when that happens, you have great racing at the top, great racing in the middle, great racing at the back. Uh, these drivers are all fighting for, what, P26, P25? Um, but when you're in a fight like this, you can't tell me it doesn't feel like you're fighting for the lead. Yeah. Speaking of the lead, Bailey Kish is now seven Ooh. seconds up the road as, uh, that Shark? Yeah. Or, no, it's Kovac. Kovac had a little, little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a kick. Oh, uh, it was Kovac. Yeah, he had a whole lot of opposite lock stepped in there. We're engine things. <laughs> Just a whole host of cars everywhere. Yeah, actually, I haven't been on the sim in probably eight or nine months before getting back into this season. And I gotta say, yesterday in the race, with uh, how close things were from what I'm used to, I found myself biting my lip a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I wore a heart, I have my I had my watch on so I had a heart rate monitor going during our race and for the first five laps it's like 110 120 and then very quickly calmed back down but those <laughs> first five six laps were very stressful I think my watch would start calling the cops or, or the ambulance <laughs> if I had it on I'm trying to find 
is the leader of the cars that have hit. And I think it is P14 crouching. Yes, that is the highest green light. So I don't think it's enough for a native P1. But uh, it'll be interesting to see where he kind of comes out after all the pits happen, after some of the more some more of the racing chaos. Maybe he should upload his livery into ASR. Um, you know, that Matt Black looks great in a road car. It looks sad on a race car. Get some fake sponsors. Get your bread up. Do we remember who uh, who pitted first? Who dove in the pits first? Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. Well, see if it actually helped them or not. Oh. Uh, Diggs, who's currently in P22. I think Krojic just over hooked into that corner. Just a little bit. Ooh, yeah. Depending on how how uh, recently he came out of the pits, tires might have cooled down a bit. I don't know about P4 last night. Did anyone take tires and try to make it up? I don't think anyone here is going to benefit from taking tires. No. The uh, for ACC and for these current generation GT3 cars, taking tires is not a um, not optimal for an hour-long race, barring extreme temperatures or like a weather change of some sort. Uh, but if you join us next, not next week, in two weeks, it's Nairton. Tire change mandatory. So that'll be that'll be an interesting approach to the race where a tire change is mandatory, but you cannot put fuel in the car. So if you underfuel it, that that's that's it. That scares uh, me every week. For my uh, first SRA in Suzuka, where I ran out of fuel, we're gonna I always overfuel a little bit. Rewind. Oh, Gordon uh, was coming out of the pits. I saw him lose seven or eight positions. I was very confused and slightly concerned. Forgot what happened there. But it's just, you know, racers doing racing things. Ends up behind a huge crowd of cars and comes out in P26. Ooh, yeah, P26. pitting out. Coming out of the pits like that in a, in a traffic jam, especially when your first turn is the sort of hairpin. That is not fun. Yeah, that has to be uh, concerning, to say the least. You're also not super sure how your car's going to react, how are the tires feeling. As Diggs, Poe, Moffat, and Chan all come around the hairpin together, throw a blanket over all four cars. And Shark just, you know, probably hoping, let him keep fighting, it's fine. Just keep fighting. I'm going to go drive off from that one. I've been pretty happy with Porsche this season on cold tires. I've never driven that car in race conditions, and it, I can control it pretty nicely with the throttle, but, uh, at least off the black side. Good, uh, good change for me. Porsche is, uh, I think, very, it's, it, it seems like a car that people either really, really like it or really, really dislike it. Um, notable enjoyers of the Porsche include your commentating team. You know, it's about. Selena's a big fan of the Porsche. Shark's a big fan of the Porsche. Uh, I think you know you know. Uh, and the, the other people who very vocally hate the Porsche. <laughs> we, we leave them in the corner to their own devices. Yeah, I found, um, at least through whatever setups I have, and maybe it is just sort of a normal thing now that, you know, Dan's saying that too, um, but in the endurance races, when you're coming out of the pits on cold tires, the, the Porsche is really good at having an outlap that feels pretty safe and feels like the tires are actually okay. Um, which is just weird to say about a car that you're expecting to have like the tail kick out. But with a lot of fuel in and the right setup, they're actually, it's really stable. Especially since there was some up, uh, update maybe a year or two ago that I think went from instant death almost all the time to just half the time. And then it got much better. Yeah, I mean, and that also I think coincided with the move from the 991 car to the 992. The 991 was a little sketchier. I still think not as bad as the reputation. Uh, in fact, we do have a pair of 991s in Division One racing, uh, Brooker and Patrick. But that car felt a little more. If you didn't treat it right, it would it would fight back. But that was such, such a fun car to drive. Well, yeah, that's certainly, you know, they, wait, they tell you the way to drive the Porsche is basically like you should be almost feeling out of control to be the fastest, right? And so that's where aliens are really able to just pop looking around in like hot laps because 
they are really much better at telling how close to the limit they are uh, compared to well, everyone else who doesn't spend as much time there. And that's the best way to drive the Porsche. Fair. Uh, since chat was bringing up Jason a lot for his run, he finally pit. So his uh, dropping in the standings is not due to some horrific accident or misplay. Just jumped in the pits, coming back out. Uh, it's now currently in P16, which puts him down three positions from where he started, but he has his pit stop done, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve cars ahead of him that have not pit. So yeah, and he's got very a gap. Fight. Didn't come out in a whole bunch of traffic. Looks like he's gonna not have too much, uh, you know, over your shoulder. Someone else's warmer tires on your outlap can always be an issue. So I think he definitely lucked out with the uh, the timing there. Yeah. Uh, has to now run down the coach. I'm Jefferson, the BMW, who's about a second and a half up the road. But as much as we all love Jason, I want to see cars that are next to each other. Uh, so we jump back to the same little gaggle of cars doing the same things in the same places. No real movement, but hopefully we see something that isn't someone crashing. Yeah, this group's going to have a lot to talk about at the end of the race. It's going to be a lot of... Uh, it's a little bit in the dirt. Ooh, you can catch up around the final turn and get a run on him. It looks like he might. The Honda have the legs in the Ferrari here. He is inside, and he has overlap, so whatever happens here is valid. Oh, and the Ferrari just really, really gets on the brakes early and then gets brake checked by the Honda for his troubles, loses two positions. Yeah, the Aston certainly being advantageous there. Yeah, Santana coming off horse off there. The uh, Aston Schlitz just taking advantage of the opportunity. Which is fair, because, I mean, he was just behind there waiting, you know, just kind of doing his thing, watching these guys fight. Decided to slip up the inside when he got the chance. Diggs and Poe just kind of stacked up on each other. The Lightning Queen car and then the Porsche. Gives better angle. Uh, pit lane exit rules. If they are consistent with what we heard yesterday, all four tires have to stay within the white lines at all times, all the way to the end of the pit exit. Uh, at which point you kind of come out into the braking zone on the apex of turn one, which we haven't seen be an issue yet. Maybe we missed something, but that could be a potential driving hazard. Something that actually helps me a lot, and ooh, that is not where you want to get some grass. Uh, just coming around, Peter there. At least, I mean, on the outside, getting some grass rather than hitting the curb on the inside, probably a better bet. Um, but yeah, one thing that's, that's helped me is when I, uh, you know, do track days, you have to stay inside that line, and it's very strict at every, you know, track event. So I just do that all the time, and it always is a bit weird to me in sim racing where someone goes out and immediately swings way wide to take the, uh, the first turn out of the pit, you know, on sort of the racing line, even if that's, you know, sort of illegal or dangerous or something, doesn't make sense. So. Since I'm used to taking it sort of the correct way, I'm able to get out of the pits, hit the brakes, and make those turns usually uh, well enough to, to get back onto my outlap pace as, as I needed. Jump in with the other GTR of uh, Gardner, who all all up in the business of Mr. Higgs. I can't tell if that's less ostentatious of a GTR, or it's just that we aren't seeing how unbelievably gold it is in the light, but the green certainly stands out otherwise. I think it's the same livery, just different colors. They're teammates. Mm -hmm. uh, I, don't, I feel like of the cars I would like, I like to see behind me or don't like to see behind me, I guess is a better ter terminology for it. Uh, the GTR does not scare me when it's behind me. The Bentley scares me. Shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> if I see a big old Bentley coming up, like, coming behind me on a straight, I'm, I'm concerned. Oh, I mean, I got, you know, my butt kicked yesterday by a Bentley. 
Um, I was maintaining one, one and a half seconds ahead of him every lap. He's good. Made a mistake. He slowed down. I got a little bit better away. But uh, in traffic, I slowed down a little bit, unfortunately. And his straight line speed versus the port was just oh, crazy. Stop. So a lot of defending I had to do. And then unfortunately, he was the one that punted me. But we were in traffic. So just sort of racing incident, I think. But um, or maybe not racing incident per se. But yeah, it's Bentley versus Porsche sort of the extremes of the two cars here. Uh, Palmieri now uh, kind of has a gap in front to Stefiak, about four seconds, but has a car right right behind him, Dunham. Uh, Palmieri and Jason both are doing really well early and built, like, built a gap, gained a bunch of positions. Jason decided to pit about halfway through the race, uh, and Palmieri, who was close behind at the time, has decided to not pit so far. So it'll be interesting to see if uh, the overcut puts Palmieri ahead of Jason, or will the undercut expand the gap that Jason had, which at the time I think was about one second. Judging by the gap to those who are uh, who have pitted in the green behind this little group of the people who haven't, that does not look like enough of a gap to overcome, um, you know, in the time for a pit. I think that. E12 through, well, let's say at least 14 or 15 or something, will probably jump four or five places easily when uh, when everyone up front starts pitting. Jason's about 23-ish seconds behind right now, and I do think a pit will take longer than that. What is the time in pit? I don't know what the actual pit time is here. I believe it's 25 seconds is what... That's not the track. He's done <laughs> manages to keep himself alive and get back on track. Yeah, I know it's not a particularly long pit lane, it's not like Spa or anything, but uh, definitely some time to be lost there. And I think it is more than that 20, 20, 20 seconds. The other thing to look out for is as the uh, leaders or the, the late pit stop drivers do go for those pits and are really trying to optimize their pit stop time, are we going to see some stop-go 30s, some beating the pit lanes happen? I hope not, but what we're starting to see is blue flags as Palmier's coming up behind Anastasi uh, in the ass and directly ahead of him. Blue flags have been waved, so we'll see uh, if Anastasi does the, uh, follows the rule book and lifts and gets out of the way, and it looks like he will. Very respectful racing here from the uh, back markers, not getting involved when they don't need to be. As Kovac and uh, GP3 sticks having all sorts of fun in those fire and ice cars. And who's that behind? Is that guy? Is that man person? That is guy man person. Oh, that looked like he was gonna go for it. And then uh, Moira, Moira Zuch, she is behind uh, behind guy. Looks like they spread out a little bit to that last sector, but these cars are still right on top of each other. Kova is saying, hold the line, GP3. But as he says that, it looks like Kova has got a significantly better run on the last corner. But that Merc has, or that BMW has the inside, so we'll see if uh, three sticks can hold it up the inside here. Uh, looks like he has to break a little, a little earlier, gives up the position. Uh, now the Porsche takes the position, takes the lead of this little, little group here. Yeah, I wonder, um, watching the, uh, sort of almost dive of that last lap going down the, uh, the mine shaft, um, at least for me in, in the Porsche yesterday, and I was wondering, Dan, if you've got an input on this, were you finding people breaking, uh, a lot later and really catching up to you down mine shaft, but then you able to take that turn tighter and sort of get away from them and do uh, feed it in the final turn. Yeah, it's pretty funny because I was taking that that hairpin at the end of mine shaft, uh, not defensively. I was taking the normal racing line. The only time I lost the place the whole race was when I decided to take a more defensive line in the middle of the track, and I lost that <laughs> momentum going into that curve. So. I would say, yeah, take the normal racing line into that last, into that, in, into it, uh, and I think we were safer. Uh, yeah. 
that was requested. Platinum gives up the position of Shark. Looks they had a little bit of an issue coming down the mineshaft into the, the, the trenches of Sector 3. And Shark has really just completely pissed off. Pulled 7 tenths, 8 tenths of a second, 9 tenths of a second through basically one corner. And yeah, that's what defending will get you, you know, as soon as somebody comes up behind you and you're looking in your mirrors, really easy to lose a few tenths. Particularly with the Porsche car known for corner exit. All that weight in the rear end gives you a lot of traction. Kovach and Beverly, no, Beverly and Guy Manperson now fighting it out. Uh, looks like the move gets done. But... Three sticks will have the inside line going through sunset, so let's see if he manages to hold the position or get it back. And it looks like he will as he kind of forces the red BMW off track a little bit. But then leaves the door open up the inside. I wouldn't I would not have been that polite. I would have put my car on the curb and told Mr. Man person to figure it out. Looks like the uh, guys up at front have some gaps between them. Maybe one or two fights here or there, but not much going on. Kind of sad, you know? It's not so much fun when it's happening. Uh, for the stream, Bailey, 9.2 seconds ahead to lead. Uh, we're not going to show him. It's boring. Uh, shout out to uh, Sunset Racing League, riding with a party of five. Hello, everyone. Too wide through uh, turn 16. That was sketchy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Colin asking what lap times are P2 through P6 running. You know what? I will tell you. Uh. What did it say? So P2's last lap was a 42.2. Uh, P3's last lap was a 41.9. Uh, P4's last lap was a 42.2. P5 a 42.4 and P6 a 42.7 so they're really really stacked on top of each other in terms of lap time as well uh, and because of that the gap staying relatively constant uh, I don't know if you guys notice on the stream we're not really showing the top five because there's not that much going on we'll, we'll run a quick flyby through Bailey doing Bailey things can't even see another car on camera he's nine seconds ahead of Sacom I think that's the back mark we just saw uh, here comes to come around the bend with Martin a second behind, which is close, but not necessarily close enough to be interesting yet, although we are we are minding the gap. Wagner, who has a four and a half second gap to Martin and a 5.6 second gap behind to Stefik, uh, who then themselves has a four and a half second gap to Palmieri, who has done them right on their tail. But, you know, the top of the grid, a little boring. But Oof, uh, 745 just coming down mineshaft just had a bit of an issue. There was a yellow flag popped up, so something might have just happened to that car. I'm guessing it's kind of a back marker, though. I don't really see him on the, the list right now. 745. Arjun yep. had a bit of an issue. Let's see if we catch something on the replay here. Oh, yep, just uh, breaking on the curb into the it looks like the hairpin. And, uh, I know Honda makes lawnmowers, but this is not one of them. You also don't want that on your tires. Oof. It's fine. It's not like he's coming up to one of the sketchiest corners on the calendar. In Cheetah, like two corners later. It's fine. Which we won't see because the replay timeout will happen now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, how long do you think that takes to burn off on this track? Uh, a couple corners. Yeah. I mean, well, so the problem though, right, is if you do that right before a long straight, you're not going to be burning it off at all. Um, <laughs> if you did it right before a couple tight turns, that's actually the best way to get rid of it. So you're saying go on the grass right before the S's at Suzuka is the most optimal place to do it? 100%, yeah. Actually, if you stay on the grass, uh, on the edges, that's probably the fastest line. That's, that probably is the fastest, uh, but here yeah, that's right. We have a very, very well-staffed and very competent stewarding team that will slap you back to the place where you deserve to be. 
for as much as I complain about the top of the grid being a little boring, we have some great racing going on in like the middle, maybe the three quarters grid, I don't know what to call it, 27, 28, 29, 30 out of 40 drivers, out of 38 drivers. So here's the problem, P17 back to, what is this, like P30 or something like that? All very bunched together, having a great fight. Uh, there's 13 minutes left, so maybe not that much time, but there is a possibility that our leader comes up to the back of this fight. Well, let's see where, oh, as we see yellow flags for uh, last place. But if last place is currently coming through, what is this? Okay, so let's barbecue. Let's find out where our race leader is. He is just coming through the final corner. So that's probably what? 10 seconds? 15 seconds? Uh, and then the last lap from P1 was a 42-2. And the last lap from last place was a, I think, non-representative 3 minute 30. Well, I think last place is, is a couple laps, or more than a lap down on the rest of the pack, because the actual people that the, the leader might catch up next are all still on the lead lap, um, and they are not just 10 seconds away. I think that might be, well, I mean, that might be somewhat, what's the, what's the car 745 would be the last in the train of these really close fighting groups, so... Yeah, and it looks like uh, it's about a sector difference. So, I mean, that, that's one mistake. Mm-hmm. Uh, Although, has our leader pitted yet? Uh, no. Okay. Our top eight have yet to pit. You guys mm, think, yeah. based on yesterday's racing at the undercut, they, they flip-flop any of those? Maybe, like, third, fourth? Um, I think what the... The pit strategy I'm most curious to see. I want to see if Jason Allen comes out ahead of Jacob Palmieri after the pits, because they were within a second of each other, with Jason being ahead. Uh, and Jason decided to pit halfway through the race, and Palmieri has yet to pit himself, but has been involved like he's really close, or close enough to affect his race to uh, Victor Diaz. And so I wonder if, with Jason, who's been in relatively clear air, for a lot of this race, like we pull him up now, has three seconds in either direction pretty much, or two two plus seconds in either direction. I wonder if that has advantaged him in this situation, and we'll see him end up uh, back in the same position he was in, hopefully with a little bit more of an advantage, or at least he's hoping with a little bit more of an advantage. But you don't think uh, Wagner could pass Martin? Or Martin oh, if he Wagner dives into the pits right? now, got it. Uh, the way the grid is so spread out, I think you just, no matter when you pit now, you're going to end up in traffic. Yeah, it doesn't really, it's going to hurt. Yeah. If I was Martin here, or Wagner, um, oh, the car's going to Cheetah. Uh, Shot's getting real close up the rear end of that Porsche. Oh, a little bit Ooh. of door banging, but that's fine. Robin is racing. Uh, may have compromised his own exit though, because Brandon Chang getting a, getting a run. He uh, takes the stream instead though. The Honda needs more top end, comparatively. Yeah, I will say, um, depending on if you've been you know overdriving a bit or you've been in uh, you know hot air behind another car or something, if you have pitted early your tires might really start to feel a pain near the end of the race. Whereas if you were able to, you know, pit late, even if the undercut is pretty strong, your tires cooling down in the pit lane, even if all you're doing is driving at, you know, pit speed and getting a splash and that, that'll help you a lot in the last couple laps. Assuming you don't spin yourself in the, in the, you know, out lap because you're heat sucking your tires. <laughs> Have I ever done that? No, don't ask. It's a, it's a hypothetical. Yeah, of course, of course. Or as uh, many people in the league would love to say, skill issue. Again, just all 
these cars coming down the hill, you can throw a blanket over all of them. Just following nose to tail, everyone's pretty much within a half a second of the car in front. Uh, just too far to make a move, but close enough to stress out the driver in front of you, I think. Uh, while you're simultaneously being stressed out by the driver behind you. Because this train continues from P16 to P25, pretty much. I mean, this is where yeah. the racecraft turns from the hot lappers to like maintain that distance without taking that car out. At least me transitioning to like being a racer two years ago or three years ago, that was my hardest thing, maintaining the distance without hitting something. Ooh, that's some good respectful driving there, it looks like. Very nice. Whoop. Yeah, sir. Ooh, not so nice. Got a great well, view of it, though. I was gonna say, yes. that serves you not getting a livery. Yeah, Cody Platt. Liveries protect you from racing incidents, people. Like putting PPF on your car. You cover your car with a livery, you are safer. Cody Platt coming off way worse, though. Loses about eight positions. But, you know, Mr. Poe just uh, decides, I'm gonna leave now. Take advantage of the chaos. And not be involved in this train anymore. Well, certainly one thing that, you know, ends up happening when you have these trains and we've only got seven minutes left, people start looking for those, how do I get these extra, these extra places, or is someone going to take the last lap, last couple, last dive, and when there's this close of a, uh, of a train, that might end up wiping out multiple people. So hopefully they, uh, they're able to keep that in mind, but it is the most dangerous part of the race usually is the very beginning and the very end. And I just want to acknowledge something chat said that I'm sad I didn't say at the time, but Cody splat. <laughs> that's great. Shout out to you. That, that, that's great. As, uh, yeah, but as you say, I mean, there's six minutes left. People will start making their moves and we see a Honda dive into the pits. Um, this is where we'll start to see that separation, I think. We have five minutes up in the pit window. General SRA strategy with the methods and kind of the restrictions on how we race. If you're the race leader, you want to pit at the last possible second. Uh, that way, if you do end up caught in traffic or whatever, it happens for the minimal amount of time. So, we'll see what uh, what Bailey decides to do as, again, just running his own race. No one else in camera frame. Uh, I wonder if he's bored. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll ask him after the race when I pull him up here for an interview. Assuming he wins. Although, actually, if he loses the race from 10 seconds up with 5 minutes left... I will also pull him in for an interview, because that'll be hilarious. I'm sure he'll love it. <laughs> Patch is really wants to be lean D1. <laughs> well, that's the question, right? If I'm Bailey, do I start going, oh, no, I'm, I'm actually not that good. I should pull back a little bit and finish only one second ahead of people so they don't kick me up. We have very, very good anti-sandbagging algorithms <laughs> in the back end. The SR rating is more than just smoke and mirrors. I feel like I got killed on that the last few seasons where I got pushed up D D4 above my head. And then now like back down to D5 silver, I'm like my, my, You're my like, I like this. This is nice. I don't have to practice for like 12 hours over the weekend before a race. <laughs> <laughs> I can confirm. turn it on, pull a few laps, and then feel good going into a race. That that's more my style. Yeah. I can't confirm dating robots are in fact And what's the uh, what's the penalty if you hit on the last lap and you get a, a speeding penalty in the pit and you can't do a stop go obviously because it's last lap. 130 is seconds. That, it is. Yeah. That's I think what it's the I'm, same uh, as the penalty for not pitting. It's a 130 mm -hmm. second pit. A 130 second uh, penalty. Which may I don't see it because I can imagine that being like you being whatever about it is like during an endurance. Like a 24 hour, what's you know, a minute 30 or 130 seconds if you're that far ahead. Yeah, no, that's immediate last place in a division this close. Yeah, uh, the least furthest probably. car behind right now is 67 seconds, so we double that. Well, I guess there is a, a car that's two laps down. Oh, fair. 
I mean, I don't even know if two laps is... Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So I don't know if two laps is 130 seconds, but 130 seconds is 210. That's a lap and a half. Lap and a quarter. Yeah, lap more or less, yeah. As Paul Mary finally jumps into the pits, so again, I'm going to go straight to Mr. Jason Allen, see if he comes out ahead, uh, which it does look like he will. So it looks like the undercut... At the very least, didn't lose Jason the position. Let's see how much he gains here with a couple cars in the pits. And he comes out ahead of Paul Mary by... I want to say about the same gap. Yeah, uh, on cold tires though, let's see if he can hold it against the uh, Ferrari behind him. Yeah, Jason, uh, Paul Mary coming out right in front of Queso, and woof, that's not good. Well, Ooh. Jason's safe. <laughs> yep. Probably shouldn't have said that. Commentator's car strikes again. I will, uh, I'll write Paul Mary an apology in general chat at some point. <laughs> but if we I'm pretty could, sure that was my curse, but it was logic, so it's fine. If we go on uh, Casey's hood cam, I wonder what happened here. Oh, just a uh, little, little clumsy from both drivers, it looks like. A little awkward. Got Kish in the pits. Uh, as well as Sako and right Martin. Now. And Stefio. This is the replay, but they're currently in the pits. Yeah, Kish is coming out right now on the inset. You see him at the, in the picture in picture, avoiding any drama. And it looks like Martin may have closed the gap a little bit to come in the pits. Maybe had a cleaner stop, a more precise stop, but I don't think Martin was this close to uh, Sakom right before the pits. And Last lap know. was two seconds faster for Martin over Sakom. So I don't know if it was a pit stop or it was an uh, in-lap. And as we noted, the Porsche feels real good on his outlaps. I don't know if the same can be said by the BMW. I thought that, uh, that Jason was further up in the position um, going into the pits, but maybe that's because people had pitted already when the last time uh, I was thinking about that. I thought he was in the top 10 or something, but um, might be misremembering. Currently up yeah, two minutes from the starting place. Last lap, Sakom was two seconds slower than Kish and Bart. Hmm. Maybe had himself a little, little bit of a, a venture. Well, that or he was taking it really, really easy through the uh, the pit line so that he didn't get any sort of penalty. Got it. Two uh, seconds in, is a lot better than 30, you know? In P7, by the way, the coach, who does have a car right behind him. Uh, or no, sorry, it's closing down on Damian. Who doesn't have a livery, which means he's not protected. Oh, it's Crutcher. Who doesn't have a livery and therefore is not protected. Um... <laughs> The coach has, I think, one more lap here. Oh no, the leader has finished the race. He has to make this move stick if he wants it, P6. And it doesn't look like he's going to get the move done. Looks like Croce is going to do just enough to stay ahead. It looks like your top three are Kish, Sakon, Marit, followed by Wagner in the GTR, Damian, Croce. Uh, then the coach, Stefik, Diaz. That huge group is coming down the hill right now, the uh, really big back third. Jason ending up just outside the top 10. A little bit, a little bit of smoke from the uh, rapid fans. Porsche gives a little wiggle. Uh, long race, I'm, very, I'm sure he's very happy to be done with. As we see these two, uh, Dunham and Higgs kind of coming around the last corner within a tenth of each other. But barring a major mistake here from McLaren. Huh? Is that a little bit of contact? Oh, is he going to lose the place? Fuel? Oh, I think he lost that. Paul that H just finish. pipped him. He might yeah, have just uh, him. held himself up because he got too close to, uh, to Higgs coming around that turn. I think both uh, Higgs and Dunham actually slightly clipped the uh, curb of Peter. 
that is that is your race. Every, everyone has crossed the line. Again, P1, Bailey Kish, P2, Jared Sacombe, and P3, Z Martin, whose first name I don't know, which I should find out. Uh, but the real hero is the GTR in fourth. Well, you can all see Kish celebrating uh, in the inset in his win. Really <laughs> animated in his uh, responses to this win. So, boys, how was the race? What is your, what is your take on race one of Division Two for this season? Well, there were oh, no parlay going into it. I thought there would be some parlay bets that that I heard about. <laughs> but you guys called out Kish going into the win, and uh, he definitely, uh, definitely showed his might. Yeah, now up front, it certainly seemed a little bit more spread out um, than maybe you would hope from such a close qualifying but you know like i said those who are fighting slow each other down um nice to see the the back having a whole bunch of uh good battles too because you know who's to say that the front few aren't going to drive themselves up into d1 and suddenly our mid to you know back third is actually who we're going to be watching up front the rest of this season fair let me go find mr kish himself and get him pulled up here uh move to yeah, I like mid-pack. I think that's the biggest uh, failure of Drive to Survive is the is the life of that mid-pack who really does drive Formula One success for the last 10 to 20 years. Hey, Bailey, how are you? Well, Eden, my man, good to hear your voice, dude. Yeah, <laughs> good race to watch. Uh, how'd it go? Talk us through it. I'm going to be honest, we didn't watch you a lot once you pissed off nope. and were like five, six seconds ahead of everyone fair. else. That's fair, that's fair. I figured so. It was... I was this this car on the start is a pain in the ass with this turbo lag and I knew I was going to get cooked and so I literally just sent it up the inside almost recklessly like I said you shouldn't do in the driver's briefing great advertisement yeah great advertisement but um fortunately I didn't cause an accident Jared hell of a lap in qualifying holy crap dude um I was with uh Jared the entire race VC wise and uh he didn't say a word the entire qualifying, and he goes, <laughs> "Take that mother!" I was like, "All right, cool." <laughs> so we're just just hoping I had front row. If I was front row, I knew I was within a chance, and I had good race pace. So obviously, it turned out pretty well. Yeah, I, I didn't realize that the the turbo lag from the start was that egregious. Uh, is it not something you can break boost to get past, or is it just something you have to live Probably, with? Probably, but I I don't know how to do that yet. I'm still fair enough figuring don't out this. Car. Don't want to risk the drive through for the speeding. Exactly. Fair. So. All right. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the time. I'm gonna move you back down to where you came from, and then I will probably grab. Oh, you were the you were the silver winner. So I'll grab I'll grab Jared because he was the gold yeah. winner. Jared goes. At least I won gold. I'm like, yeah, true. <laughs> so. Yep. All right. Thanks, nice. fellas, for the stream. Yeah. Appreciate it. Of course. I've put him back from whence he came, and I'm going to pull Jared up now. He didn't sound too tired and bored. True. I mean, winning, winning, winning's not boring. <laughs> Jared, my man. Hi, guys. Hey. How'd the race go? Yeah, I mean, it went really well, but I've got my my uh, committee in the background telling me that Bailey's shitting all over me in his interview, so I don't really... <laughs> <laughs> so... He and I are going to have to have some words after I let him through on T1. Thank you, too. <laughs> well, no. you, you had a fantastic quality lap. Talk, talk us through the beginning of that race. How'd you feel? Um, I felt pretty good. I knew that with him side by side that I'd probably be able to gap him going down the straight because Aston turbo lag things. I definitely did not expect him sending it back up the inside. And we went side by side there for a little bit. And he had the line. I'm not going to fight it too hard. It's too early, and we're both running for the same crew. So I'll settle in and follow him for a while, and then he just kind of disappeared. Does everyone but, know about this turbo lag thing? Am I the only one that didn't know that Aston had horrendous turbo lag? Yeah, it's <laughs> it's pretty brutal. <laughs> huh. But I wonder why that is, because that 4 liters is a twin turbo, so in theory you should have some pull in the low end. I, I would expect more lag from the BMW. No, but BMW's got a split turbo. Um, ah. It's it's not a twin turbo, it's a split. So it's got that smaller turbine that's handling the low end until the, the higher end compression kicks in. 
that is some motorsport shit. <laughs> I definitely don't know this because I've got a three series parked out in the driveway and I did research on it. <laughs> like, how can I get one of those turbos and put it on my car? Yep. Yep. <laughs> Buy a BMW. Everyone loves a good chungus. The M2 calls to me more and more every time I see one. Uh, <laughs> but besides that, just a cool, clean race. You didn't no stress, just kind of putting laps down. Uh, putting laps down for the most part. There was some stress. Zach was kind of creeping in for about 20, 25 minutes, and then I had like the absolute rearmost pit box, so ah. I had to stay on full lock after the left into the pit lane Easy to like to maneuver it. into the box. Yeah, and so I ended up losing a second, second and a half to him coming out of the pits. And I'm, I'm glad the checkered fell when it did. Cause I don't think I would have held onto it for more than a lap or two. He had been hairy in me for the entire second half of the race. Well, that was uh, great to watch. We told Bailey that his race was very boring and we didn't put him on stream much because he just vanished. Uh, but it was cool to watch a little bit of a fight for the podium positions. Uh, yeah. How do you feel about next week? Talking about Snedder in the Snedder um, 10. Um, Two weeks. the last time we raced there, I was in D3, and I think me and my teammate went 1-2 on it, but okay. that was okay. also the last time that I raced there, so we're talking, what, like a year ago or so whatever? So high expectations. Got it. Oh, no, not at all. Like, so those, we made a prediction those... before the race about who's going to win, so you're going to win that, You're going to win the next race. <sighs> Why you guys got to do me like that? <laughs> <laughs> So, do you think your car is uh, more suited to Kyalami or Snedderton? Snedderton. Because. Oh, um, confident. Well, I mean, it, it 1.8, it was trash at Kyalami. And then 1.9 made it a little better. And then this recent Kuno spot made it a little bit better. Um, but the British GT tracks, because so, so many of them are dependent on being able to clatter over curbs, that. The BMW I've found is tends to be pretty strong at all those short little twisty airport turned into race circuit venues. <laughs> the ones that need the fattest curbs. Yep. Well, that is not good news for all the McLarens on the grid. I, I can assure you of that. Yeah, I don't think they're going to have much of a good time now. Yeah. All right. Well, oh. good race. We're going to let you. I'm going to put you back where where you came from, but uh. Great, great race, very entertaining, and uh, looking forward to seeing you at Snatterton. Right, sounds good, guys. See you guys in a couple weeks. Yep. Bye. The way he said see you in a couple weeks sounds like a very confident man, someone who thinks they're going to win the race and be back up in the booth. <laughs> well, uh, him, maybe he'll be in go the in back of the pack. All right. Funny, yeah. actually. So that was the race. Uh, any uh any closing statements from you two? Anything you you guys wanted to point out? Anything happy about? Sad about? What, what should we what should we tell D two as a, like a, you know an at all announcement? What should they do better? That's a good question. I thought they did pretty well as far as you know race one after you know maybe a a gap in the time that they've been racing or, or with you know new people from different divisions. I thought they did really well. Um, if anything, I would just say you know. Uh, Pick your battles. Fair. I like to say, love your car. Like, BOP has allowed a whole bunch of cars that never could have raced in this series to come back in. It's enjoying to see that, even if I'm still driving, you know, the latest portion of it. Enjoy That's your fair. car and make it happen. Uh, my, uh, I think my contribution to D2 will be, um, you know, if you didn't have a livery, you seemed about a thousand percent more likely to end up in a wall. So, I'm not saying A plus B equals C, but I am saying I'm kind of good at math. Uh, and on that note, we'll, Damn. we'll call it here, and uh, we'll see everyone when you tune in in two weeks, because we have next week off. Go spend it with your significant others, and then we'll get back to racing. And once again, please tune in to SRA.